everybody. This practice problem is going to show us how to graph a demand curve, either from a demand schedule or from the algebraic expression for the demand curve. So let's start with the demand schedule here. So here, I just put up a somewhat reasonable looking demand schedule. And you'll notice that this is reasonable because as the price of the item decreases, the quantity demanded of the item increases. And we said that the law of demands tells us the price and quantity demanded tend to move in opposite directions. So in order to make a demand curve out of what we see here, all we have to do is draw the axes for our demand curve and then plot the points. So if I were to go over here, just as a reminder, our demand curve has quantity on the horizontal axis. So we can put a Q here. I put a capital Q because it seems like we're talking about market quantity because I put a capital Q over here. Sometimes we will distinguish individual quantity demanded, you know, demand by one person. And we'll put that as lowercase Q. Not everyone is good at that distinction. Go with that here. And we put price on the Y axis with the vertical axis here. So then it's just a matter of plotting these points properly. And we'll notice that these guys here are actually our x variables. I'll call these x's, and I'll call these y's. So when we want to plot, we want to make sure that we're plotting these as the x variables and these as the y variables. Even though oftentimes when we see a demand schedule, we'll see price first and then quantity demanded. So we can look over here and we can say the first point that we'd like to plot is the point 2010, right? And we could say, for example, maybe 20 is here. I'll try to do this at least a little bit to scale. I'm not so great at it, but you know, at least to scale relative to one another, not necessarily to scale such that these axes are both on the same scale. But this point here is the point 20 comma 10 on our demand curve. So that's just going to be this point here. We could then plot the next one and say the next quantity demanded or the next x variable is 25 and the next y variable or the next price is 8. So now we need to graph 25, which maybe I'll say is here, and 8, which is here. And that's going to give me something that's about here and call this point 25 comma 8. I just keep doing that. Say the next one is going to be 30 comma 6 because 30 is our x variable. And we could say, well, 30, again, is somewhere here. Maybe 6 is about here. I don't know why I drew that so far away. Let's fix that. There we go. So then our next point would be here. Let's call this 30 comma 6. Our next point is going to be 35 comma 4, because again, x variable, y variable. So we'd say here, maybe 35 is here, 4 is about here, our next point is approximately here, at 35 comma 4. And last but not least, we have the point 40 comma 2. So maybe 40 is about here, and then 2 is here. So our last point would be about here. And then all we would have to do is connect our dots to try to figure out you know, what the rest of our demand curve would look like. And we could say, all right, we're just going to connect the dots like so, and call this D for demand. Now, in this particular instance, I wasn't perfect about drawing it that way. But in this particular instance, we knew that this demand curve was going to be a straight line. And we can ask, how did I know that? And what I noticed here is that every time I moved to a new price, my price went down by two. And every time my price went down by two, my quantity demanded went up by the same amount. It went up by five each time. So I have consistent price decreases here and consistent price increases here. So if I were to calculate the slope, that being 
the change in price divided by the change in quantity in this particular context, because slope is just change in y over change in x, I would get the same number in each case. So even though this isn't literally decreasing by 2, increasing by 2, this is always decreasing by the same amount, and this is always increasing by the same amount, which is going to give us a straight line. But it's worth noting that demand curves in general don't have to be straight lines, and you could plot them you know, in the same way that we did here, regardless of what shape they ultimately take. Now let's think about how to graph a demand curve given the equation for the demand curve. So we see an equation for a demand curve here. This may seem a little bit strange because we usually write the demand curve as quantity demanded equals you know, some function of price, which once we look at our graph is somewhat odd because we said that the quantity demanded was the variable on our x-axis and the price was the variable on our y-axis. So this is basically stating an equation as x in terms of y Whereas in our math classes, we're very used to seeing equations as y in terms of x. So in a way, this is a little bit backwards. But nonetheless, we can figure out how to graph it. And we can actually figure out how to graph it without explicitly solving for our y variable. So you don't actually need to go through and solve this for y and then apply all the rules of algebra that you learned before. We can do a little bit better than that. So again, remember our demand curve has quantity on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. And I can see, again, I can see that this is going to have a negative slope because we have a negative number here. And even if I solve this for price, we would still have a negative coefficient on quantity demanded, so we're going to have a negative slope. We also know that we're going to have a negative slope for demand curves in general because demand has the law of demand, which states the price and quantity move in opposite directions. So what we can do, because we know that we're going to get something that's just moving down and to the right on our axes, we can actually just figure out where these intercepts are and then connect the dots. Because we know from the structure of this curve that this demand curve is going to be a straight line. So we could just go here, we'll start here, and think about where this demand curve is going to hit the p-axis. And it's going to hit the p-axis when our quantity is equal to zero. So if we were to say quantity equals zero, we would just plug in a zero here and solve for p. So we would say zero is equal to 45 minus 2.5p. We would say that 2.5p is equal to 45. And we would say that P is 45 divided by 2.5. And we could take out our handy dandy calculator and say, all right, it's not quite obvious what that is. So let's see what we have going on here. It's going to do 45 divided by 2.5. Oh, hey, that's 18. Would never have gotten there on my own. So this hits the price axis at 18. Again, I'm not really drawing this perfectly to scale. But I know that I'm going to have a point here, which is where quantity equals 0 and price is equal to 18. You know, this is just the point 0, 18. We could find out what point is on the intercept down here or on the q-axis by doing the opposite and just noting that the point that's going to be on the q-axis is the point where price is equal to 0. And again, we can say, well, if price is zero, and we plug in zero for price, what's our quantity demanded? So what we notice here, so we say, okay, so our quantity demanded is equal to 45 minus 2.5 times zero. Well, 2.5 times zero is just zero, and 45 minus zero is just 45. So we can say that our quantity demanded when price is zero is just 45. Maybe we put that out here. And we notice that this is just the point 45 comma zero. And then we can connect the dots. 
like so. And again, label this as D for demands. And you'll notice we could do all of this without actually turning this around, without actually plotting a whole bunch of different points, and so on and so forth. Another interesting thing that you can note is that this demand curve, algebraically, is the same guy that we plotted before. Because check this out. If I were to think about one of the points on this curve here, say maybe this point here, or even this point here, which is easier, when price is 4, let's plug in a price of 4. 2.5 times 4 is 10. 45 minus 10 is 35. And hey, check this out. When the price is 4, we have a quantity demanded of 35. And we can do this with all the other points and see that, in fact, they're all consistent with the equation of the line here. So what I just gave you was two different ways that you can come up with the demand curve. You can either have a set of price quantity pairs given to you in a demand schedule, or you can have an algebraic equation that explicitly relates price to quantity demanded.